I'd like to thank you for listening to our discussion today on Hydro DEM Basics, how and why to recondition. My name is Zach Herman. I'm an engineer with Houston Engineering out of our Fargo office. Today we're going to be discussing what exactly is a Hydro DEM, how do we go about producing it. Uh, to get at that, we really break it down into um, what exactly is DEM reconditioning, why and how is it applied to the base DEM. We are going to discuss how to evaluate which portions of the landscape are contributing versus non-contributing by analyzing potholes that exist within the DEM and also the stakeholder review process that we typically associate with these projects to get local input on drainage to ensure that we're really providing a quality hydro DEM at the end of the process. Um, once we've gone through, the, through those three steps we'll talk about how is all that integrated together to derive with the hydrologically DE or excuse me, hydrologically reconditioned DEM, commonly referred to as a hydro DEM. A few other things we'll discuss are things such as consideration for the scale of reconditioning if you're using a data set that's already had uh, reconditioning applied to it, and also some applications that we're using the hydro DEM for. Now if we look at this graphic, this lays out the basic um, workflow that we use when approaching these uh, projects where we're developing a hydro DEM. Basically, you can see the wheel at the top there. Um, we've got uh, the first step, which is apply the reconditioning to the DEM. Number two will be the non-contributing analysis. And number three is the stakeholder review. Once we have these three pieces of the pie essentially put together, we can combine everything together to produce uh, the hydrologically reconditioned DEM, uh, commonly referred to as the hydro DEM. Once we have that, we can go into a multitude of applications. This particular graphic shows an example where we'd be taking the hydro DEM and actually using it for landscape prioritization for things like BMP placements and that on the landscape to really maximize the benefit of those particular structures. But there's a lot of other applications that the hydro DEM is applicable for and I'll go over those quickly at the end of our presentation to give you a sense of the things we've been using it for. So, And also, you know, typically with these projects we're also doing some reporting of the results. So the first thing we're going to discuss to, today will be um, the number one on that wheel, the apply reconditioning. So the question I often get asked is, you know, the state of Minnesota has invested a lot of money to acquire LiDAR information that's very high resolution and does a really good job of depicting uh, what the topography of the landscape actually looks like. So if we have that data set, why do we have to go through this whole process of reconditioning? Um, you know, it can really be generalized down into two things. Number one, when LiDAR is flowing, there are certain cons instances that cause the, um, the, the bare earth LiDAR information to maybe be compromised somewhat. You know, things that we see in the Red River Valley would be things such as um, extremely flat ditches. Um, in certain other instances, if the LiDAR was flowing at, was flown in the spring during periods of high flooding, you may have um, standing water in certain locations at the time of LiDAR acquisition. And also another thing that we see a lot, especially when you get to where there's a lot of potholes and cattail type vegetation, is that the cattails are actually returned as ground points and that can cause errors by falsely interpreting where high ground exists within the DEM. The other big factor, and this is more of a universal factor that you see regardless of what uh, um, geographic region you're in, but the presence of digital dams within the landscape. So basically when we say digital dams, it's just anything that causes an impedance to flow that if you were to go out there under real conditions, it would be like a road or something like that, and there'd be some type of a subsurface alteration or drainage alteration under that particular location, like a culvert, a bridge, a flood control structure, for example, things of that nature. So we actually have to go into the DEM, interpret the DEM for where those locations exist, and compensate for that so uh, your hydrologic properties as you move downstream uh, stay true. In terms of applying reconditioning, there's several requirements of what you need to uh, to get a high quality product at the end of the day. Um, the first thing, obviously the, the better quality your LiDAR base data set that you're starting with, the better quality your end product's going to be. You know, definitely need a technical expertise in using GIS processing software to get from um, A to B to C. Um, other things that are really important is, you know, this is where the stakeholder review really comes in, is a good local knowledge of what the drainage characteristics are within your project area. 
this is especially true in areas where you have really flat topography where um, it's easy to misinterpret which directions are going. So that really does end up being a, a key piece of developing our hydro DEM. So what you see illustrated here on uh, this particular slide is an example of what we call a digital dam. Now if you follow my mouse across uh, this particular graphic, you can see blue correlates to high, brown correlates to lower elevations. So what we have here is an actual, this is a stream that would cross Interstate 94, for those of you familiar with the Red River Basin, just, just to the southeast of Fargo near the Barnesville location. So we do know that water would traverse along this stream cross through a series of larger culverts under the interstate and continue on um, to the west towards the Red River along the path of my mouse here. If we don't account for the culvert that exists under the interstate at this location, the computer would actually interpret runoff as following down this low point, running into this impedance to flow or running into Interstate 94 and continuing on down the road ditch in this direction, which we know doesn't happen under existing conditions. So what we need to do is actually come in um, to the DEM and um, remove that digital dam. So basically, what, as you can see here, we've basically knocked out the higher elevations where that digital dam exists. So now what happens is the flow, will, the computer will interpret the flow as coming down along my mouse crossing Interstate 94 at this location where we applied the reconditioning and continuing on downstream. And this makes sure that we have proper hydrologic characteristics um, derived as we continue on downstream from this location. This is another example of digital dams, uh, something you, very common for those of you working in extremely flat topography. Uh, basically, this is, uh, these are a couple sections of land which you can see illustrated in uh, this top graphic right here. Um, this would be one section and below it we have another section. And the topography is so, so flat such that the highest ground adjacent to these sections is actually the roadways themselves. So um, we do know that culverts exist. Uh, there's a culvert that exists at this location. You can see a blow up at the bottom of the slide here of that location. Um, but if you don't account for that culvert, what happens is you get like this, this waffle effect across the landscape. Now you can see over here in this filled DEM graphic where all of these were actually filled up until you reach the lowest point um, in elevation along the road. So when that happens, you know, your f what's referred to as your flow accumulation then produces something that looks like this red um, in where my mouse is here until it reaches a point that it can actually break out of that section and the lowest point in the road as you can see actually exists where my mouse is at right here so that's the elevation that flow would actually break out and continue on downstream now if we look at the topographic information we can see that there's definitely a drainage uh, system that exists right here and there should be a culvert accounted for at that location. So if we were to put a culvert in here, that would compensate for that and flow would then begin to um, reflect the true hydrologic characteristics that exist within this field, reach this outlet point and can you continue on downstream um, into the river system and continue on to the north. But again, without accounting for that, then we get a lot of errors, not only within this section, but also how flow accumulates for the river system further downstream. So the, this next series of graphics we'll be going through is just, um, is just a way of illustrating why the reconditioning is so important. Now, again, this is, a, this is actually adjacent to the location we had just previously looked at along Interstate 94 where we have a waterway. Um, if you follow my mouse here, there's a, there's a fairly defined waterway traveling along um, where my cursor is currently moving. It reaches Interstate 94 crosses the interstate and then continues on downstream. Now if we look at it with the LiDAR banded over the top it becomes a little bit more obvious. Culvert location right here. Water travels along the interstate right away for a distance before uh, continuing on to the west uh, towards the Red River. Now if we weren't to apply any reconditioning to this DEM and we were just to begin processing as is without any reconditioning applied, 
and we wanted to figure out what the drainage area was to this particular point of interest. You can see the triangle on your on the screen right here. So if we were to do that, what that would yield is um, flow would actually accumulate as it should to the east until it reached the interstate. However, since a culvert doesn't exist at that location, it would con continue along the interstate ditch until it reached a point where it was forced to um, essentially break out over the top of the interstate and continue on downstream. Um, you can see that occurring within this particular graphic and the, what the ultimate, the uh, the watershed of our point of interest then, what, what happens um, without applying reconditioning is we're left with this 13.5 acre watershed when in reality we know it should be something much more significant than that. So what we do is we come in and we actually apply the reconditioning at that culvert location and what that yields is that we have about a 6.6 .6 square mile watershed um, so basically you know we're missing 99 percent of our watershed by not accounting for um, the culvert at that particular location you can see that 13.5 acre watershed is is illustrated here in this small little red area um, where my mouse is at, but again, by applying the reconditioning through the interstate, we're left with a drainage boundary that represents this, this uh, purple boundary that you see illustrated here.